Welcome, I'm joined here by Harrison Gross, CEO and co-founder of Innovative Eyewear. Harrison, great to be with you, how are you? Hey, thanks for having me today. It's a pleasure to have you. Give us an overview of what Innovative Eyewear does. Can you kick us off there? Yeah, sure. The mission of our company is to upgrade the world's eyewear by adding useful technology features to comfortable prescription-ready glasses. Uh, we set out to really build the first smart eyewear that was usable as all-day prescription eyewear, uh, which was something that has been severely lacking from the smart eyewear space. Uh, so we launched our flagship product in January of last year, it's called Lucid Light, uh, and is now currently offered in more styles and sizes than any other smart eyewear on the market. Got a lot of exciting developments coming in the year ahead, uh, including uh, kicking off our partnership with the Nautica brand to produce Nautica branded smart eyewear uh, and help get our products in front of customers with familiar fashion brands uh, like Nautica. And uh, we're very excited for, for the year ahead and uh, all of these cool new developments we have uh, for the smart eyewear market. Amazing. Okay, and what does that ultimate vision look like? What will a pair of glasses look like in 20 years, for example? Can you give us a look down the road? Yeah, absolutely. I think there's definitely an argument to make for wearables uh, becoming sort of the phone of the future. Now, that could be a pair of glasses by itself. It could be a combination of wearables, like glasses and a watch working in tandem to create a mobile computing experience. Um, there are a lot of different ways that the space can go, but I do believe that the smartphone is a transitional technology um, because wearables are simply more ergonomic to use uh, than the smartphone in general. Um, so I think that there is definitely a strong case for wearables becoming um, the, pr the primary method that we stay connected to our digital lives in the future. I don't think it's necessarily gonna take uh, 20 years to get there. Uh, you can see you know, a great analogy for our business is the smartwatch because that's another uh, technology enhanced uh, product that was existed in its traditional format for hundreds of years before becoming enhanced with uh, new technology in the 21st century. Um, and, and now we're seeing you know, a huge uptick in the use of smartwatches, and I think smart glasses won't be too far behind that. Uh, what that means is that more and more consumers are gonna be getting more and more information uh, throughout their day through wearables uh, in the present day, not in 20 years from now. 20 years from now, I think smart eyewear is gonna be as ubiquitous as smartwatches are today, if not more so. Fantastic. Talk a little bit about the biggest challenges in designing your products. What have you learned along the way during this process? Right. So there are a lot of hurdles to adoption uh, of smart eyewear in the, in the optical market. Uh, we set out to address all of these hurdles one by one over the last few years since we entered the space. And uh, number one is it has to look and feel like normal glasses. Uh, in order for any smart eyewear product to be successful, whether it's an AR smart glass like Google Glass or an audio glass like ours, uh, it has to look and feel normal. Otherwise, consumers don't want it on their face. Uh, that's absolutely number one. Number two is really helpful if the glasses are priced at a point that's similar to what consumers are expecting to pay for eyewear. Again, it's all about meeting those traditional expectations in the optical market and exceeding them with smart functionality. Um, so that's something that we're doing and that's part of what makes our product so disruptive. If it was $500, it would be a lot less exciting than it is at $150 uh, to $200 like it is today. Um, and finally, the smart functionality of the glasses has to be easy to use and powerful and useful enough to warrant upgrading to smart eyewear from regular eyewear. Um, so those three points are really central to uh, mass market penetration of smart eyewear products. Uh, and we think that we're addressing all three of those with our current products. Fantastic. Okay, the lockup for shares from your second crowdfunding campaign just ended. What do you expect this to do to the stock price? Do you have any predictions there? Um, it's hard to say. The second crowdfund was um, smaller than the first one. The first one uh, was the one that was really incredibly successful. Um, the second one was a little bit more toned down. We actually ended it early because we were planning to IPO. Um, so the amount of shares in the second crowdfund, um, I believe, is less than is about 50,000 total. So I don't think it's gonna have a significant impact um, on the stock. Terrific. Okay, is there a limit to people's appetite for wearable technology? Where is the line when it comes to functionality versus having this technology as a part of what we wear? Well, you know, it really does have to uh, do a couple, any, any wearable really does have to do a couple of things really well. It has to surpass the functionality of its original counterpart. So the smartwatch has to have a sufficient number of features on top of a regular watch for people to be interested in it. Uh, same for the smart eyewear. Um, you have to have enough technology to merit um, consumers bucking their lifetime uh, use of regular eyewear and going to smart eyewear. Um, to make that transition, you really do have to deliver a lot in the product. Uh, it all comes down to, I think, ease of use and accessibility. So our glasses are very easy to use. Uh, we have customers all the way up to 85 years old that use our smart eyewear. Um, I guarantee you there are no 85-year-olds using HoloLenses or Google Glass. 
Uh, and that has to do with the fact that our glasses are so easy to use. There's only two buttons that do, that do everything. They turn on the glasses, um, they let you skip tracks, change the volume of what you're listening to. If you're getting a phone call, it'll ring on the temple and you can click the, the temple to answer the phone call and take it totally hands-free. So all of these awesome functionalities that we have in our glasses are all accessible through one button. So it makes it extremely easy to use and anybody can learn our glasses in minutes. So we think that it makes it much easier for the average person who's totally uninitiated in wearables and smart eyewear um, to adopt our smart eyewear product uh, where they may have been hesitant before due to some of the more complex control schemes and functionalities of other smart eyewear products uh, that were promoted on the market um, to even a greater degree than we ever have been. Like for example, the Google Glass uh, or the Ray-Ban Stories uh, has a higher level of technology that, and complexity than our product. So it can be a little bit intimidating to the average eyeglass wearer who's considering their next uh, frame perhaps being a smart frame. Makes a lot of sense. Looking at the future side of things, if the U.S. enters a recession, right, how is your industry going to react? Will people still be purchasing wearables? Well, the key thing about our business, what we learned very early on, is that you can't treat it like a wearable because that is too much of a niche market. You have to treat it like eyewear and market it like eyewear. And eyewear is a recession-proof good. People always need to see. Um, so I think that we won't be as adversely impacted by uh, larger market forces in that sense. Uh, our greatest challenge now is awareness. Uh, people just don't know about smart eyewear and they don't know about lucid eyewear. Um, so those are two things that we have to really address and um, educate the wider optical market about the benefits of smart eyewear. Um, so I think that if we're able to successfully do that, we can weather any uh, macroeconomic storms. Terrific. Okay, eyewear will supplant watches as the most popular wearable in how many years? What do you think about the future of this? Do you think it's conceivable? And if so, what do you think that time frame looks like? Um, I, I would argue that it's uh, the market sizes aren't too dissimilar now, and you have about um, something like two thirds of the population requires some kind of vision correction. So either glasses, reading glasses, uh, contact lenses, and that number is only rising as we're spending more time looking at screens. It's causing people to become more myopic at earlier ages. So more and more of the population is going to be glasses wearers as time goes on. Uh, whereas I don't think that more people would necessarily become uh, wristwatch wearers as time goes on, right? So I think that there is a great argument to show that um, just based on the fact that we're constantly looking at screens all day long, uh, which is something that our glasses can really help you with too, and use more of the voice functionality to get the information you need throughout the day without pulling out your phone. Um, but yeah, the, the number of people that need glasses is only increasing. Uh, so I think we're very well positioned um, it, 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 with our particular uh, type of wearable. Outstanding. Kind of a hot take there at the end. That was exactly what we were looking for. Some insights into this industry moving forward. Sure. Really exciting. And obviously a lot going on for you guys right now. Harrison Gross, CEO and co-founder at Innovative Eyewear. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. And we look forward to upgrading your eyewear.